All right, so we're going to do five tips on balancing face to face and class virtual classrooms. So one of the things and in a lot of these tips are going to be sometimes a little bit, you know, uh, low hanging fruit, but they can kind of yield um, some useful things. So the first is actually just emailing the video link before class. So send the zoom link to them, the, the Google Hangouts the meetup link, whatever it is, um, but send it to them. So it's fresh in their email. And when you do that, one of the tips that a, a colleague gave uh, this week is actually include a conversation starter. Uh, and that can be a variety of things, just conversations that you anticipate having at the beginning of class. So that could be, you know, a thing that made you smile this week. It'd be a question you want people to think about and kind of come ready to like jump right in. So you're not asking just as class starts, but, it, you know, 15, 20 minutes ahead of time. So the ideas start to flow. Uh, it could be a story about yourself that best reflects your values. Who would you uh, who would you interview if you had the chance? Like, you know, some interesting conversations. And they might be, depending on what your topic is, you might think about the question as framing or helping you transition well into whatever it is you plan on uh, having them discuss in class. Additionally, particularly for those students who are coming in virtually, uh, you might actually also include what are the questions that you will be asking for periods during the class when there's going to be discussion. And by doing this, you're, you're nodding to them that, okay, like we know you need to be prepared. Here are the questions you should kind of be ready to start thinking about, you know, connecting to whatever the homework was and being prepared to launch into. Uh, you may also want to include or to clarify uh, when, when the virtual students will be expected to talk or lead the discussion. So you may, again, have a very light agenda or something like that where you say like, you know, I'm gonna expect by 4.15 or, or, you know, by, by 5.30 that uh, we're gonna check in with the virtual students so they can start to share or they're going to lead the conversation. So just kind of giving some very clear expectations before they go into the session of what to expect. Uh, again, it's not going to, it is not going to work for every single student, but by using this as a, as a formal mechanism of, you know, getting people into a pattern of behavior, these things can help. And of course, you can also encourage them that if, you know, at certain times using that chat to answer the questions. That is, if you, depending on time, you may only be able to go to two or three questions, but say for the virtual students, um, you know, there's expectation that they contribute to the chat if they aren't, aren't talking to, during class. The fourth is uh, using, uh, you know, I identify a Google Doc, whatever collaborative document you want to use, but actually creating a document for collective note taking. And the expectation is that, you know, by the end of class or by the next day, um, everybody will have contributed uh, to that doc and things that they learned. So you can include questions, you can include, uh, you know, to do's, you can include what I call or what I call, what everybody calls exit tickets, like things they need to kind of write and reflect on before they can leave. Um, so think about how you might be able to kind of have this ongoing doc that becomes both this like amazing documentation and kind of de facto history of what goes on in your class and also have students see that as this is a place that they should be engaging in or they should be contributing to either directly during the class or shortly thereafter. And the last is, is not so much a tip, but something to really think about, and that is the primacy of where the faculty is. Uh, I actually am never quite sure whether that's where the faculty is or where the faculty are. Um, but I've come to find and, and really think this isn't always realized that wherever the person is with the most perceived power is, that is where the locus of attention is. And no matter what the classroom, the faculty member is the one with the most perceived power. And so wherever they are, if they are face to face, then there's an assumption that the primacy of place is face to face. If they are attending, you know, if they're coming in via Zoom, that's where the locus of attention is. And so what that means is, you know, really thinking about how to be very, very mindful about including, about drawing attention to people in the physical space into the people that are coming in virtually if the faculty member is physically present, 
uh, just really kind of taking time to think about what that means for how you interact with your students. Um, and kind of a side note to this or ways you can start to do this is, you know, assigning a student or having a student volunteer who's either uh, monitoring the chat or is there to be a reminder to either the, the instructor or faculty member or the, and the students, you know, well, what about, you know, well, let's hear from our uh, let's hear from our virtual students. Uh, so really the idea is just to kind of be thinking about wherever that faculty member is, that's where all the power is. And so it does change some of the relationships with the students in the other place and to be thinking about how you navigate that or how you bring them in or how you help them figure out how they can be brought in or how they can step into the conversation. Um, so those are my five tips. Uh, again, here are a couple of resources that uh, I will share along as well uh, for if you want to do that notes template, if you want access to the slides or find you know where I found some of the images for this. That's all for now. Thank you all very much.